The most common cause of airway obstruction is due to fall back of the tongue and epiglottis into the posterior pharynx due to relaxed muscles in the floor of the mouth and pharynx supporting the tongue. Oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal airway lifts the tongue and epiglottis away from the posterior pharyngeal wall and prevents them from obstructing the space above the larynx. Oropharyngeal airway is a hollow tube which may be made of elastomeric material, metal, or plastic. The parts of the oropharyngeal airway are body, bite block portion, and flange. Curved portion corresponds to the curvature of the tongue and oropharynx for their effective separation. The pharyngeal end or the tip of the curved portion rests between the posterior wall of the pharynx and the base of the tongue. That way, the pressure is exerted along the base of the tongue and also pulls the epiglottis forward. The distal end of the channel opens at the tip. The channel provided by the tube facilitates oropharyngeal suctioning and provides a pathway for inserting devices into the esophagus or pharynx. At the opposite end where the buccal end is the flange. It prevents the airway from moving deeper into the mouth and serves as anchor to fix the airway in place. The bite portion is a short firm and straight portion that fits between the teeth or gums and prevents patient biting and obstructing the air channel. The water's airway is made of metal. It has an oval flange, a straight bite block section and an anatomically curved pharyngeal section. The distal end of the pharyngeal section has two holes on the side. The airway was discarded due to its propensity to damage teeth and soft tissue and inability to see any foreign material lodged within it. Gettel's airway is the most commonly used airway. It is a single-use airway with integrated bite block. The pharyngeal end has a smooth beveled tip for easy insertion and minimizing trauma. Gettel's airway comes in nine color-coded sizes. Sizes 000 and 00 are for premature and full-term newborn babies respectively. Size 0, 1 and 2 are for children and rest are for adults. Berman intubating airway has a center support and channels along each side that allow a suction catheter or endotracheal tube to slide into the pharyngeal space. Berman airway can open on one side so that it can be split and removed from around a tracheal tube. Williams Airway Incubator, as name suggests, is designed for blind orotracheal intubation and fiberscope guided intubation. It consists of a cylindrical tunnel in its proximal half while its distal half is open on its lingual surface. Patil Syracuse endoscopic airway is made from aluminum and is designed to aid fiber optic intubation. It has lateral channels and a central groove on the lingual surface to allow a fiberscope with a tracheal tube to pass. The slit at the distal end allows the fiberscope to be manipulated in the anteroposterior direction. Ova Sapien Fiber Optic Intubating Airway is designed to deliver a fiberscope as close to the larynx as possible. At the buccal end are two vertical sidewalls and between them is a pair of guide walls that curve toward each other. It can accommodate a tracheal tube up to 9.0 mm. A cuffed oropharyngeal airway or COPA is a new airway device which is fundamentally a regular oropharyngeal airway with a large cuff attached around the distal end. The cuff separates the tongue from the posterior pharyngeal wall to create a patent airway. Proximally, it has a standard 15 mm adapter connected to a breathing circuit. Compared to other oropharyngeal airways, COPA gives the ability to provide positive pressure ventilation. Though oropharyngeal airway helps us maintain the patency of airway, there are certain situations where it can be detrimental and uncomfortable to the patient.
Using an oropharyngeal airway on a conscious patient with an intact gag reflex can lead to patient discomfort and hemodynamic perturbations like hypertension and tachycardia. Coughing with oropharyngeal air in place can raise intracranial pressure and intraocular pressure. So, prior to placing the oropharyngeal airways, pharyngeal and laryngeal reflexes should be depressed. The oropharyngeal airway should not be used if the patient has a foreign body obstructing the airway. So, any obstruction should be removed and suctioning should done to prevent aspiration. Trauma to the oral cavity or mandibular or maxillary areas of the skull is also a contraindication to using oropharyngeal airway. The correct size is estimated by measuring from the center of the mouth to the angle of the jaw, or from the corner of the mouth to the earlobe. The airway is lubricated just enough so that it aids the passage through the pharynx but does not cause blockage and aspiration with the lubricant. The mouth is opened using the crossed or scissors finger technique. The oropharyngeal airway is inserted in the patient's mouth upside down or concave side facing upper lip. When the junction of the bite portion and the curved section is near the incisors, the airway is rotated 180 degrees and slipped behind the tongue into the final position. Nasopharyngeal airway device is a hollow plastic or soft rubber tube that resembles a shortened tracheal tube with a flange at the outer end to prevent it from completely passing into the area. They are inserted into the nose and through the posterior pharynx, clearing the airway by displacing the posterior tongue and soft palate like oropharyngeal airways. Nasopharyngeal airways do not typically cause patients to gag. Thus, this device is recommended over an oropharyngeal airway in patients with an intact gag reflex. NPAs are also helpful when a patient's mouth is difficult to open or access, as in cases of trismus or angioedema or oral pathology. The length of the nasopharyngeal airway is estimated by placing the tube against the side of the face. The correct length airway will extend from the tip of the nose to the tragus of the ear. Diameter of the nasal airway should be the same as needed for a tracheal tube, that is, 0.5 to 1 mm smaller than for an oral tracheal tube. Before we insert nasopharyngeal airway, we need to clear the oropharynx of obstructing secretions, vomitus, or foreign material. Both nostrils should be inspected for size, patency, and the presence of polyps. The area with better patency should be selected for insertion. We can also use vasoconstrictor drops before insertion to prevent bleeding and local anesthetics to numb the nares. If the person is to be anesthetized appropriate medication should be provided to ease the patient. The airway should be lubricated thoroughly along its entire length. The NPA should held with the bevel against the septum, that is, with the pointed end lateral and the open end of the airway facing the septum. Then, it is gently advanced posteriorly while being rotated back and forth. If resistance is encountered during insertion, the other nostril or a smaller size airway should be used. The tube is advanced until the flange is resting at the nostril opening. Airway obstruction can occur when the tip of an airway presses the epiglottis or tongue against the posterior pharyngeal wall, covering the laryngeal aperture. Rotation or anteroposterior neck movement with a nasopharyngeal airway may lead to lumen obstruction, but using a fenestrated airway can help overcome this issue. Compression of the nasopharyngeal airway lumen inside the nose tip may also press the epiglottis or tongue against the posterior pharyngeal wall. Trauma, including injury to the nose and posterior pharynx, can result in epistaxis, while central nervous system trauma may occur if the patient has a basilar skull fracture and the nasal airway enters the anterior cranial fossa. 
Tissue edema can lead to ulceration and necrosis of the nose or tongue, and dental damage may occur. Other complications include laryngospasm, coughing, retention, aspiration, allergic reactions to latex, and gastric distension.